Arthritis is probably one of the most under-recognised diseases in both dogs and cats out there. Uh, and I had a fantastic opportunity to sit down and chat with Hannah from the organisation Canine Arthritis Management, which she launched and founded about four years ago. We've been online friends and kind of communicated a number of times, but it was great to actually finally get a chance to sit down with her and pick her brains. And what she delivered was a real masterclass in arthritis that really all owners should be aware of because unfortunately the chances are your dog or your cat will suffer from arthritis in their life and it might be earlier than you would otherwise imagine so we owe it to our pets to actually be able to pick up signs that they're in pain in the earliest stages of that disease and then to treat them appropriately and as you'll hear from Hannah there are just so many options out there that needn't cost the earth and in fact many of them are completely free so let's jump in to this master class on arthritis with Hannah from Canine Arthritis Management. Hey it's really great to be here thank you so much for inviting me. Not at all this is long overdue and I know we've been speaking about doing this for for years it seems um, and there's so much that we could talk about so I've actually really found it difficult to 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 kind of come up with some really good questions and topics because arthritis is clearly such a massive uh, a, a massive area and there's so many different things that different approaches to it but I thought we could start off with you know your kind of introduction to the world of arthritis because obviously as vets we see it every day but that wasn't really what drove your your passion it was a very personal story you have yeah it was it was kind of a th- three or four prong attack actually so um, I'm a vet I've been a vet now for 19 years and um, I have been an owner of a very arthritic dog who um, everybody says that their dog is the love of their life mine was okay (laughs) mine really was and um, it was very different to be on the other side of the table and it was very different to have the decision paralysis the anticipatory grief the the not knowing what was working, what wasn't working, not knowing who to turn to, you know, when was something hurdy-gurdy or when was something evidence-based? And suddenly I realised that there weren't the resources to support owners. And I was an owner and I felt vulnerable and I felt useless. And that was my best mate that I wanted to support until the end. So that was a, a really big driver but it actually started before that and it was a defining afternoon in a practice in Brighton and I was sat on the floor and it was a blue kind of laminate kind of easy clean floor you know the ones with the little flecker etches in them and I was sat next to a black Labrador who I was just about to euthanize and I just had that epiphany of everything else is working in this dog it's hard you know, its chest, its abdomen's fine, its eyes are still fine, its teeth are clean, yet its coat's okay, but it's got no ability to stand up. You know, its back legs are shot. There's no muscle mass there. And there's nowhere to now go with this. This is our only welfare option. How did this slip through the net? You know, how did we get here? And um, it was a double whammy because I had two appointments in a row like that, literally back yeah. back. Tough. Um, and both of them were just real defining moments for me thinking every other disease we're really like vigilant about and there just didn't seem to be any vigilant kind of approach to identifying it early managing it effectively and getting really good quality of life for the long term for these dogs so that was a really big yike and then um, I developed something called supraspinatus tendinopathy And I don't know if anybody has had chronic pain themselves and it comes all different forms. You can have musculoskeletal chronic pains. You can have irritable bowel chronic pain. You can have irritable bladder, migraines. They're all under the heading of chronic pain. And I suddenly realized what it's like to live with a disability, something that creeps up on you, affects your mood, affects your capability, affects your willingness to go and do the sports that you love it affects your ability to sleep it wakes you up in the night and I married that up with these dogs that had had months if not years of that uncontrolled pain destroying their life getting to to the point that they didn't want to stand and that was like yikes and then um the real corker for me was one of my very dear friends had chronic pain and committed suicide so 
yeah they kind of those four things just came together and I thought we can do better than this and I think everybody anybody that's listening to this that's a vet also knows that um we have we get a bit of a vet bashing for all of our services having a price tag to them they don't look look harder we do lots and lots of stuff for free and I just um I felt that that was a bit of a driver for me was to actually create a service that I felt the vet profession could be proud of it could go out to the public as a free of charge service there could be a little bit of blending of minds and approaching this together as a united front so that was the idea yeah yeah and and a result of that realization I mean that spawned canine arthritis management cam um which is you know the group and the organization that that you provide and we'll talk more about that later which is yeah fantastic and you've certainly had the recognition you know because you've stepped forward when a lot of us have had those realizations and you're absolutely right I mean I tend to say you know the the mind is willing but the body's given up and we're at a stage where yeah I mean the classic one is the Labrador unfortunately isn't it that um you know it's a bit overweight and you know we thought it was getting you know getting old slowing down uh, and and wasn't really recognized and treated as aggressively as as we can and and it's it's absolutely heartbreaking when you're in that situation and and two back to back is bad enough but it's it's a weekly if not daily event it's, for a lot of us isn't it it, is. that we're dealing with those, oh, really, those, really those is. cases so with that in mind you know that's the end point a lot of us aren't recognizing the early signs of arthritis and when I say a lot of us I mean I include you know the veterinary profession as well in in that we're not picking up as early as we should do or we're just dismissing that as old age and you know normal slowing down so just kind of how common is arthritis in our dogs oh you want it it's well bad it's well bad um so the figures that a lot of people refer to let's just get them into context they were um they were researched in 1996 by a telephone poll in north america um, and that's when we didn't know as much as we do now about chronic pain and how it is expressed yep. and at that point 1996 80% of dogs over the age of eight and 20% of all dogs since then um people are talking about 35% of all dogs going up to 40 to 50% of all dogs cats is absolutely terrible yeah of cats over the age of 12 and i think 50 percent of all cats 50 to 60 percent of all cats cats are a different kettle of fish we're gonna when i find my um financial fairy godfather i'm gonna do cats <laughs> and, and, really and, and you get to clone yourself so you've got the time to cover it as well yeah, yeah. i mean cats are yeah they're another they're another topic altogether and they are yeah they're they're just massively underappreciated and cats just adapt amazingly their behavior yeah. so that we so that they don't show us the signs of of arthritis but if we know what to look for much like dogs though if we know what to look for we can you know it can become glaringly obvious that this individual is suffering from pain yeah. so what kind of signs in the early stages are people just completely missing or di or dismissing okay i think first of all people have to realize the main kind of like etiology so the, the main causes because then they're going to start looking at earlier much earlier in the dog's life instead of going oh well he's now seven I suppose I better put arthritis on my differential list no yeah. let's bring it forward six months onwards it should be on our differential list because the major cause of arthritis in dogs is developmental joint disease so your hip displaces elbow displaces osteochondrosis patella luxations you know angle and limb deformities which is really prevalent really prevalent and so that really kind of opens the mind that when you have a dog that's got a recurring lameness through the summer months um, and is two, that actually could be arthritic change because they've got an abnormally functioning joint. So the way to kind of um, divide into easy categories so that you can identify early, I'm going to do the CAM factor. Everybody's seen the X factor. Did you have ever that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we. I think so. I don't really watch much TV, but. I'm sure everyone knows what you're talking we got, about. <laughs> we, got the, we got the cam factor. We got the cam factor. So you have to go, ah, cam factor. And, um, so on my cross, at the top, there is behavioral change. And then there's postural change. And then there's physical changes and capability and gait changes. So divide it into four. And it's a really good way of training your brain. Partly because we have this inbuilt bias in our own heads of, 
did I really see that? Is that really something to be worried about? Oh, he's too young to have that. And also that terrible, I want to bury my head in the sand because I don't really want to admit that this is a problem. But when you divide it into four and you start ticking off each category going, yes, I have got behavioural change. He doesn't meet me at the door anymore. He doesn't want to play. He's become a little bit iffy around other dogs. He's become sensitive to noises that he never was before. Hmm, okay. Actually, he's got quite a roached back. You know, he's got quite an arch. He's tailed. He doesn't use his tail so much. He's quite dropped. And he's very tilted in his, in his back legs. And he just doesn't look comfortable. It's like a bit like a wonky table. Right, okay, that's that category taken off. Okay. His coat's looking different. You know, he's got whirls and patterns and strange. And he's got muscle mass real building up around his shoulders. And he's kind of getting slim around his back end. Right, I've got quite a lot of physical changes. And yeah, he's walking with a abnormal gait I don't know what it is I, I, is he lame I don't know I'm not a vet but there's something not right oh my god I've suddenly got all four categories filled in this is all directing me to the core of my cam factor which is is there a chronic pain component to this is there a musculoskeletal pain component to it and then you can take that to the vet it's a download on the cam website you can take it to the vet it's called the suspicion of chronic pain and um, pdf and you can offload what you're seeing with clarity. Whereas what happens in a consult room, which is 10 to 15 minutes is, I don't think there's, I think there's something wrong, but I don't know really what it is. Ooh, tricky. Yeah. <laughs> the clock's ticking. How are we gonna get to the bottom of this in 10 minutes on a slippery floor with a table in the middle of the room? My computer's facing the wrong way and we haven't even got a window for air. How are we gonna get to the bottom of this in 10 to 15 minutes? Take your piece of paper with your thoughts clearly laid out and it'll be a lot easier. Yeah, absolutely. And take videos of your dog walking in its normal, you know, in its normal environment on its normal walk. Exactly. So, yeah. The slippy floor is, you know, we obviously need it for cleaning and things like that, but it's, um, you know, it's a nightmare for dogs and they don't walk properly, especially if they're sore, are they? Exactly. And I direct my clients to the CAM website because it's the place to go for proper, you know, proper information and detailed information, because there's only so much that we can do in that 10 15 minutes you know even even if we're book, we know that we need to do better and we're booking half an hour slots which is probably about as long as most people are getting it you know that we we can only scratch the surface of that and we can where there's a risk as well of bombarding people with all this information and actually it goes over your heads because you you're blindsided by the confirmation that your dog the does owner's taking about 25 25 of what we say yeah, and yeah. To- if you went to see a pain specialist or a chronic pain practitioner, um, you'd be with them for at least an hour. And when I used to do my home service, I'd be with the um, person for an hour and a half to two hours. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a completely different kettle of fish to then being expected to impart that kind of knowledge in 10 to 15 minutes. Because you're not just giving a pill or a potion, you're coaching that person on identifying, understanding, um, lifestyle changes exercise adaption you know, dietary changes how the pain meds work what to use when when to stop them when to come back do we need to do x-rays oh my god it's a lot to take in so yes the good news is the website is being rebuilt <laughs> that's a big job <laughs> actually yeah so the website is um i wrote that when i can only but say i was in arthritis kindergarten i um, i feel like i'm now in secondary school I haven't actually progressed to university yet. There are some people that I admire that I'm like, why can't I join you? You're amazing what you do. Um, but I definitely now look back and think, right, I've got a lot greater understanding myself. I think I know how the public are thinking, how their minds work. There's so many add-ons. So yes, the new website's going to be launched by the summer. Fantastic. I look very much look forward to that. But I guess, you know, you came back to just going back to how you felt when, you know, Holly was diagnosed with arthritis and that you felt vulnerable and useless. Um, that's how our clients feel and and the kind of the pet owners that are listening to this now when they get that diagnosis. And there's the potential for kind of analysis paralysis and decision paralysis because there's so many you know, so many things that they could be doing. And people are also vulnerable to being taken advantage of, aren't they? Because there's a whole load of um, amazing supplements out there that will cure your arthritis. Or is that just all marketing, Hannah? <laughs> I, I am really outspoken about this. Um, let me tell you a story. Okay, so this is true. One day I get this email from somebody saying, oh, I didn't know that you supported the supplement. And I was like, oh, you did. We did. 
Oop. Yeah. So I went and had a look and I was like, for, for sure. There was a picture of me that they'd taken off our website and they put a banner underneath it saying vet approved. I was livid. Yeah. So do you do? You can't get hold of them because the website's got no contact details whatsoever. All you can but do is buy the product, but you can't get in touch with the company. So we're like, right, where's this coming from? So we, we found them on social media and we started tracking them. And we found that the first person to like every single post was the same person. (laughs) So then we were like, right, who are you? You seem to be here quite a lot. And considering that you're the UK's number one best-selling supplement, are you? Um, Your vet approves? I don't think so. So we found that his Facebook page was open. And stupidity, we went and raised his life to find out who he was. And it turns out that he used to own a bodybuilding kind of company and he sold supplements so we then went to company's house to find out having found what his previous company was and it had been closed only about eight months prior suddenly this dog supplement had been launched so in eight months this supplement company that had not existed suddenly existed and was the uk's number one leading joint supplement and clinically proven i don't think so so um be careful guys There are some absolutely ruthless people out there and independent laboratory studies on a lot of these unknown brands is terrifying because a lot of them don't even have the content that they say that they've got on the packet in them. So um, I'm not saying that supplements don't work. I think they have their place, but I think sadly the majority is ruining it for the minority, if I'm honest. There is so much absolute crud out there and there's no regulation on this world. So they can they can really pull on your, your emotions, on your vulnerability. And you, you will, this is a classic, people will buy it Friday night on their iPad watching TV. So their eyes watching TV, they're on their iPad, they're worried about the dog. Oh, that sounds good. Look at the videos. Oh, that dog went from not being able to move to now it's jumping fences in three days. Oh, this is amazing. Buy it, buy it. Oh, I'm suddenly in a subscription scheme. Okay, well, I'll I'll just go with it because I love my dog. I love my dog. I'll do this. And um, you will see improvement in some cases because this is a disease that has, and you know it so well because you've done amazing videos, regression to the meat. You know, they get worse and then they start getting better. And that supplement that you bought because you've seen your dog worse ties in just in time that they were actually yeah. coming back yeah well they waxed away and you normally take adv- you normally take action when things are at their worst don't you so they were going to get better anyway absolutely and and yeah i don't I don't want to turn this into a supplement rant because it could so easily do that but yeah those people are taking advantage of our owners who recognize that there's a problem and just want to do the best for their their dog and and their market marketers are very good at their job i mean they'll also they'll you know, they'll bombard you with Facebook ads if they know that you've looked at, uh, you know, if they've been on the camp page, I'm sure they, you know, they'll twig that and then they'll bombard you with ads. And, and you've yeah, got to be so that's careful, what the, the algorithms, we found that a lot of our followers were suddenly in this kind of bombardment of, of supplements. You know, how do you manage this? But, you know, marketing's marketing, you know. I can remember um, you type something or you say something to a friend and suddenly you start getting ads. And you're like, how does that happen? Yeah. So just be really careful guys and i think a rule of thumb is speak to your vet about it because we know what is got some evidence of effect some is possible some is no so have a chat with them and um, be honest with them and say you know I'd, I'd actually like to source it myself don't take offense what would you advise or look at what they're supplying because they are regular they are going to be selling stuff that's got evidence of benefit from reputable companies um whereas when you go alone and you go into one of these pet pharmacy online suppliers they're just selling whatever the public wants yeah flower pills that are masquerading as the the latest greatest yeah it's, yeah it's so difficult with that in mind or with the mind that supplements you know can absolutely play a role they're not the be all and end all that unfortunately sometimes they end up being thought of as um the other thing that as vets we get accused of and unfortunately there are vets out there that are like this is just throwing painkillers at our pets and that's the only thing that we can do but we like to think of something called a multimodal approach to taking kind of making changes in a lot of different aspects of a pet's life including painkillers but um you know why is that important and what kind of areas can people 
look at. Okay, this is where I get really excited. Okay, so there is so much you can do. It's crazy. You know, um, when I started CAM, I, I was really at the start of my learning journey. I was working on my university education and some experience and just being fishing around. Now I just feel so much better equipped. There are so many options out there. And what's really interesting is the free of charge ones are the biggest impact. So weight control, weight control, weight control, weight control. <laughs> I, I joke oh, every time just... I speak to someone and we always end up coming back to weight, like with, with everything, with yeah, everything I've spoken about is so, it's just so important, but yeah, sorry, it's carry so on. It's so important. No, no, but it's so true. And <laughs> nine out of 10 owners of overweight dogs can't actually see it now. So it's not your fault. Please don't go go and break yourself so we don't want anybody sitting on the sofa crying going oh, i've let them down i've let them down it's not your right. fault take this message now and i say when i'm lecturing take your eyeballs out put them back in look at your dog fresh eyes now critique where are you at and what can you do about it because body condition scoring is a free of charge tool that you can do now at home look at your dog are they carrying extra pounds because it has such a massive impact on arthritis pain so not only is the me mechanical weight carriage for those joints, so it's increased forces on really compromised joints. You've also got the inflammatory nature of that fat. So that's like petrol on those arthritic joints. But we also know that the lipid droplets, the fat droplets, also infiltrate the soft tissues surrounding the joints, weakens them. It's also got a massive impact on other forms of health. So diabetes, heart disease, respiratory disease. But we also know in humans, carrying excess adipose tissue has an effect on your cognitive and emotional state. So you've got a dog that's painful and you're also going to add a, a really big dose of depression. Yeah. <laughs> Pain and a little bit of depression in there. And you're sedentary because you can't move so much. This is a recipe for disaster. So if anybody could pot this up and sell it as a pill, right, so it's going to reduce mechanical forces. It's going to reduce the inflammatory nature. It's going to build strength in the surrounding tissues. It's going to make them happier. It's going to improve their cognition. It's going to have a range of other health benefits. Guess what? This pot of pills is free. You would just, you yeah. would subscribe yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's a massive one. Yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's simple as an idea, it's that, which doesn't make it easy because weight loss is a whole journey in itself. And I'd certainly encourage yeah. you to, you know, talk to um, the veterinary team, certainly here i find my nurses do a fantastic job with their weight clinics um which we run free of charge because we think it's so important um and the impact is you know is 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 huge um and yeah like you say we're i, I like to say to my clients that have rec have recognized that their dog's overweight or they're asking that question is that because obesity is so prevalent in dogs you know depending on where you are somewhere 60 percent, i wouldn't be surprised to be honest if it's higher than that um it's about 69 percent According to, I think it's 69% according to Banfield. Yeah. So that's yeah. surveillance. Yeah. And, and certainly my experience in the UK is that it's much the same. And in New Zealand, it's much the same. So wherever you are, it's probably much the same. But that, that, how common that is just skews our perception of what a normal dog should look like. And so actually, yes. like the one of the biggest weight con concerns that I have my clients is, oh, I'm worried that they're a little bit underweight. Oh, no, no, they look fantastic. This is how a dog should look. <laughs> um and really you know um so so yeah so so weight's one thing and absolutely we could bang that drum for a long time but yeah any overweight dog lose weight and yeah. and it doesn't take much does it to improve those comfort levels no 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 so you only um they've done studies and six to eight percent weight loss will dramatically improve the signs of lameness so one of the one of the clinical signs of arthritic pain is lameness so altered gait and they've seen um with that small amount of weight loss significant change so yeah just grab it guys um i could talk forever about weight control because i think it has so many benefits but um my love and my my stumbling across this appropriate description mm -hmm. lifestyle change um so let me just explain how this came about I was a vet. I suddenly got really fascinated in chronic pain i set up a little mobile service just trying to work out what was going on so I was working as a vet during the day and then in the evenings at the weekend I'd go to people's homes so they were owners that I could spend quality time with them 
And I started bringing the pieces to what I believe the OA puzzle is. So you've got your, your pain relief, you've got your nutraceuticals supplements, you've got your weight control, you've got your exercise management, diagnosis, clinical ob objective monitoring, lifestyle. So these dogs that I was visiting, they were trying to get across the slippery floor. They were still doing the stairs, but stumbling and, and, yeah. and jolting everything because they weren't quite able to judge the last step. Um, they were trying to do the patio steps. They were trying to go across the decking. They were still trying to climb in and out of the car. And the owner really saw them as I need to let them still have their, you know, mobile independence. They're four by four because they've got four legs. They, they don't need my assistance. And a dog is a dog. I, sh I shouldn't start mollycoddling them. He can do this. And if you don't use it, you lose it. So I, I, even though he's struggling and I can see he's struggling, he has to keep doing it. Otherwise, he's going to lose it and get worse. And all of these myths rolled up into that non action and I it only took for me to start stepping in and say right let's talk about the tissue changes that are happening alongside OA let's talk about the weakness that comes with it let's talk about the deficits in balance that they get let's talk about the fact that quite often their placement is poor so they're so likely to trip stumble and fall we have to make allowances for them and we do it in humans you know we have Zimmer frames, hold onto the wall bars, halfway steps, chairs that help people to get into a standing position because it's too hard to pull yourself up. All of this thing. I lived in a place called Eastbourne for a while, and it's um, also known as the place that people go to die. <laughs> really older person population. And there were so many of these mobility support shops because it's logical, you know, it makes sense. So once we started looking at adapting these dogs' environments, putting the rugs down, putting a baby gate up, you know, adapting the back steps, putting lights up so they could navigate in the dark, dramatic changes, like dramatic changes. Yeah. These were dogs that you couldn't touch because they were so painful. Three weeks later, totally massaged them, totally, you know, pick up their feet. So the lifestyle is this missing link and it's free of charge. Yeah. It's again, the game changer and the final um game changer well there's more actually but i've only got time <laughs> exercise exercise yeah. it's it's everybody does it you know but look at what you're doing is it too much and i probably 80 percent of my owners i'm saying you're doing too much for your dog's capability because the tissues are not at their peak fitness now they're going to fatigue quicker when they fatigue they become dysfunctional and painful so then they're going to shift their weight to their comp um, compensating joints, that's going to make them work harder. They're going to get painful there. Then they're going to throw their weight back. Negative cycle, negative cycle. Yeah. So cut your walks down so that you don't get to that point and then build them back up again. Look at where you're walking. Look at what you're doing on the walk. Get rid of the ball chuckers, guys. I can't stand them. I'm really sorry. But if you've got weak, painful joints, they do not want to be going... <laughs> no. And we kind of think with from that in mind, I mean, yeah, the ball throwing is a big no-no, but people will think, well, if they were sore... They, they wouldn't do it but their drive to and it's the whole thing the dogs drive to kind of please the owner to please us and to just get on with things is huge and if there's that stimulation of that interaction with the owner and chasing the ball and it's great fun they'll just do it till they till they drop yeah and i think people forget like neurochemicals are powerful substances why do people go and take recreation drugs every single week and why do people lose shed loads of money on coke hits you know because that rush is incredible what that does to the way that you feel and that ball comes out and they just go Whoa! Yeah. oh i feel amazing because i see that this is going to be good <laughs> and suddenly pain's gone and they just go and go and go and go and then they and then people go oh he he normally plays ball until he's tired i'm like ah, yeah. what are you doing so um let them carry the ball roll the ball hide the ball you know you don't have to be the ball police but you've got to really think about how to preserve that tissue so the three things that i've talked to you about and i could talk forever about it are free they're yeah. free yeah so, and and make so much difference they don't seem well yeah if on the face of things they don't seem that big but they are the cornerstones of, of how we can kind of get on top of this condition and then we've got a whole load of other things we've got and yeah we don't have time to go into every single treatment with dad we've got our physical therapies we've got our, you know there's there's the pain killing question that people are often very scared of well maybe we should touch on that a little bit not for, yeah. for as long as we could but you know are painkillers going to knock out a dog's kidneys are they going to you know destroy their liver Put it like this, guys. If, if you've got to this point and you're thinking, oh, okay, she's all right. She's a bit weird, but she's all right. 
if you know how much I loved my dog, I like seriously, I've got tattoos on my wrists. I loved her so much. <laughs> would I, would I give her something that was going to bring her to a, a, a premature end? No way. And she was on anti-inflammatories for two and a half years of her life because she needed them for it to have a quality of life. I think something that, that needs to be really addressed is this fear that once you start on them, you're on them for life. No, not necessarily, because if you get the weight off, adapt the lifestyle, change your exercise plan, get um, a good diet in the background, maybe a nutraceutical, you've got some hydrotherapy, some physiotherapy going on, you're probably going to come off of them, yeah. you know? But what we have to do is educate people that it's use it to get somewhere. It's the window of opportunity. Take away that discomfort so they're willing to use their body and start building strength, stamina and ability. So that's one myth. The next myth is that there, it's the, the cause of all evils. Well, actually, the literature and the studies show that many of these dogs that do have adverse events, which don't get me wrong, it can happen. Quite often it's a comorbidity. It's been lurking under the surface anyway. And unfortunately, the anti-inflammatory is just the final straw. So that's why you need to have really good health checks and you need to do regular blood and urine samples. Um, and the next thing that people say is, oh, but once they start taking them, they'll get used to them and they won't last as long. What do I do after they've got used to it? No, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work yeah. like that. Yeah. You know? You need to get in before the pain is wound up. You want to get in there when the pain is controllable and use them, do your lifestyle changes because you can hopefully come off of them. If you wait till your dog is painful and you think they really need it, you're going to be on two or three medications because that's when it's going to be impossible to control. Yeah. Or you're not. Uh, the other thing that we get is that, well, I'm, I'm aware that the side effects, but I recognize that my dog's pretty painful now. So we'll give it for a week and then we'll stop it. And then we'll just give the odd tablet as as needed. But we're yeah, we're not really tackling that chronic pain. We're not tackling the wind up, the changes in the nerves and how that pain. Do you want to hear my analogy to this? It's great. Okay? There's a lot. Down. So we've got all these people in the UK that have been doing up their houses for ages so there's going to be this electrician and he's in his house and he's been rewiring his house now for about 10 months because he's got nothing else to do and he's rewired and rewired and rewired that is the brain that is the pain brain you know it's taken a long time to get to where it's got you're not going to be able to switch that off you've got to unwind it your nervous system is quite plastic as much as we can build muscle and lose muscle and we can gain fat and lose fat your nervous system is also changing much faster it's adapting all the time so if your dog has actually been carrying pain for three four five years that's a hell of a lot of wiring that that man's been doing in that dog's brain and these drugs have got to be there to help the brain start unwiring all of this so if you're going to use that, that drug for three four days or a week and go oh, it didn't work well it's just because it's been wired for so long. it's going to take a long time to unwire it don't be scared of doing long courses no absolutely and you might see some benefit you know, in a few weeks, but actually you're not going to see the full benefit for months. Yeah, they, they say that if you're going, if you've got a dog that's centrally wound up, so they've had pain for a good period of time that their nervous system has now adapted and has got better at processing it more efficiently to the brain, it's going to take at least three months. Yeah. So you do kind of bear that in mind. Yeah. And that's where giving them intermittent treatment doesn't tackle that in any way, shape or form. So... <laughs> Yeah. And even with that, this short discussion we've had, it's easy. I can imagine people going, oh, my God, there's so much that I need to think about and I don't know where to start. Um, <laughs> the CAM website, we've already discussed that, but you got, you've got some fantastic resources there. So you've spoken about the, the CAM factor. Um, you've got like a home, um, kind of a home safe leaflet. It's you've my got home a load too. of different things. Yeah. 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 So there's a download and resources section. So you can go and just print this stuff off. There's um, what has changed my dog. So it's a questionnaire that you can fill in. You can take to your vet of all of the things that are happening. So they can look at your lifestyle, what food you're on, what supplements you're on, all the things that you've done. There's a suspicion of chronic pain document at that. There's the chronic pain indicator chart at that. All the instructions to use. The It's My Home 2 is a way to check whether your house is safe. Um, so there's loads, loads in there. Um, even how to video your dog so you can take good video clips to your vet. Our YouTube is huge of interviews. They're not as beautiful as yours. I must admit, Alex, <laughs> videos are very beautiful. Um, but these are interviews with lots of key opinion leaders, academics, specialists, experts, 
who, like me, feel passionately about sharing their knowledge and they come to CAM and they give up their time for free. And we do interviews that last generally about an hour and you can tap into all these different topic areas. There is so much content in there now. Um, so that's that. You can follow the CAM Facebook page and you can watch these events live. We do one to two a week. Um, so do do head over to there. And there'll be links to all of those resources. So if you think your dog's got arthritis, go there. If you don't think your dog's got arthritis, go there because the chances there anyway. are <laughs> the chances are that they may not have it now, but they, you know, there's a good chance they're going to get it later on. And if we can, you know, tackle that, I mean, I guess we've kind of thrown a few statistics out there, but arthritis and chronic pain is one of the three big causes of a reduction in quality of life in our dogs. And yeah, it, yeah. it's really that important and that 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 common. Um, Hannah, we could talk yeah, about our hashtag. I... Yeah, just so people know, our hashtag is your dog more years. And yeah. seriously, identifying it early, putting these changes in place, you will get more years. And I know it. You know, I've been doing this for four years now. And a lot of people do start trying to bury their head in the sand because they think the only option is going to be pain relief and they don't want to introduce that too early in their dog's life. Don't have that attitude get the signs if you see them get them sorted get a diagnosis and start adapting your lifestyle because we've got loads of people that follow us whose dogs are five six seven years old they identified it when they were one two years old and they've managed it successfully and the dog is a lean fighting machine still having a great quality yeah. of life yeah and hey if you do need us if you do need pain meds all the time even after making these changes at least you're keeping your dog happy and they yeah. are by and large safe but yeah, Hannah, I think we're going to need to do another one of these to talk about everything in a, <laughs> uh, you know, a, a kind of, yeah, arthritis um, 201. But thank you so much for, for spending the time to come to talk to us. Um, it's a hugely important message that you've done an amazing job in getting out there. So, yeah, thank you to from all the dogs that you've, you've helped. And, yeah, um, I hope you'll come back. Yeah, yeah, of course. Love to. Perfect. Cheers, Hannah. See you later.